G'day guys, I'm the one and only Strom, and I'd love to know. How you doing? Good? Well, that's great. So, today, I want to share with you guys the story of my, um, weed addiction, and how it, like, how it started, my downward spiral with it, and how I eventually overcame the addiction itself. So, yeah. How it started. Well, back in, it's like, late 2015, when I was still living with my cousins, Matt and Lee, and I wasn't living at home, I went over to visit my mum one day, and she wasn't home, right? But she had left some um, weed behind. And um, at this point, I hadn't tried weed for the first time, and I saw this as my opportunity because I wanted to try it for a long time. So I decided to roll myself a small little joint and, you know, smoke it. But what I wasn't unprepared for was just how intense the first effect was because I got like a full body stone like floating dropping like kind of a stone and I I was like it wasn't a bad trip but it was just like a really freaky trip that I wasn't used to and I was just like panicked and I felt like I had to get somewhere safe so I so I kind of did something stupid and I basically left mum's and went back to um, my cousin's place while I was bloody stoned and you know I was walking, walking from there to there to there, and just like, yeah, I'm, I had to cross a few roads. Surprised I didn't get hit by a car. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. And I ended up once I got back to my cousin's place, I ended up just going into my room and you know, laying down on my bed and just like you know, letting it um, letting everything pass. But yeah, after that, when I went. When I ended up moving back in home with mum in 2016, that was when I um, had my first decent experience with um, weed, where I was smoking with mum, and mum was the one who like showed me just how to you know properly enjoy weed, and you know the importance of you know smoking it in moderation and like um, also enjoying it with um you know. Someone that you can trust, you know. She taught me that important thing about weed. But then after um, after my mum died in like early 2016, it's just like weed became one of those things where it was like, it became like a um, crutch for me because, you know, I was using it as a means of, you know, escaping the reality of what my life had, you know, descended into following my mum's death. And that was, I was using it like when I was living at my own Julie's and then subsequently when I got this apartment here. And, you know, over time my usage of it gradually increased until one, one fateful night in, you know, late 2017, I ended up, I was alone, I was on the internet, and I was, you know, super bloody stoned, but stoned was all I was, I wasn't under the influence of anything else, just weed, but I had like a really, I had a bad, really bad trip, and, you know, I was, you know, posting, like, posting a ton of random nonsensical shit to Facebook, you know, I was freaking all my friends and family out, it just, you know, everything that I, you know, that I was doing and it eventually caught the attention of, you know, the uh, mental health team who came around to my place to visit me and asked me what was going on, how I was feeling. And I ended up telling them that I wanted to bloody stab my brother because uh, at the time, like my memory of it, that in incident is foggy at best, but I remember my anger was, you know, my anger during this bad trip was directed towards my family in general, but my brother specifically because, you know, I felt like my whole life was falling apart and no one cared about me. And it's just like things spiraled way out of control. And that all culminated with me landing in the psych ward for 
first involuntarily for um, three months, then voluntarily a few days after I got out for another two months. And, you know, that's when I ended up writing in um, my psych ward diary and documenting, you know, everything. And that's when I came to realize that I'd been, um, you know, I've been using weed as a means to escape my reality of, you know, dealing with the loss of my mum. And while I was in my, while I was in the psych ward, that's when I really started to, you know, process the loss of my mum. And I, I wanted to, you know, I made the first step of wanting to actually deal with that loss while I was in there. And that's also where I, Met many good friends, one of which I'm still in contact with, Alison. Um, but yeah, after I got out of the um, psych ward, I still used weed, but I my usage of it like increased a lot over uh, over the next like I got out in early 2018, and up until about mid 2020, my usage increased like a lot like towards the peak of my addiction I was smoking like I was smoking like 20 joints a day and barely getting stoned whatsoever it was like at most the uh, the stone the stone effect was like a slight slowdown of time but that was pretty much it you know it wasn't it wasn't what I was used to because my tolerance to the tolerance to the THC and the weed, you know, it had gotten so high that I was barely feeling it. And it's just like, yeah, I eventually came to realize just how much money I was spending on weed. Like I was spending upwards of like 350 to $400 per fortnight on weed. And it was barely doing anything for me because I was smoking so much and, you know, like all the weed that I was buying would be gone in like two days, if that. And it's just like, yeah, that's when I eventually got sick of it. And it's just like, yeah, I was getting sick of it. And that's when I transitioned from weed to, you know, meth in, you know, like late 2020, early 2021. And it's just like, yeah, I was, the thing with um, the thing with weed though is that um, people say that weed is like people. Some people say that weed is addictive, but I personally find it that it's both addictive, like smoking it, as well as the it's addictive mentally, like both kinds of addiction uh, apply to it f for me, like with my personal experience. And it's just like. When I, at the peak of my addiction, when I was, you know, realized that I was spending so much money on it, it's just like, I was still addicted to smoking it, but I was no longer addicted to the psychoactive effect of it. It's just like, cause I wasn't feeling that. And it's just like, yeah. And it's just like, yeah. And I ended up, I ended up, you know, just basically stopping smoking weed altogether and in favor of, you know, smoking meth because I wanted like something, you know, harder that I could actually feel. And it's just like, yeah, that's how I, cause I was ended up spending less money on meth than I was spending on weed. So it's just like, yeah, that's why I ended up switching poisons, so to speak. It's just like, yeah. That's the story of my um, addiction to weed and, you know, how it, well, I wouldn't say I overcame it because, you know, like I said, it's just like I kind of switched poisons, but, you know, that's how it kind of like just ended. And like after I quit meth, I just, you know, I quit both meth and I didn't go back to weed afterwards. So it's just like, yeah. You know what? 
either way, I'm glad that I've managed to, you know, kick both addictions, both weed and meth. So, you know, so honestly, honestly don't know how I did it, but, you know, I think it has something to do with the fact that I finally, um, you know, managed to deal with the loss of my mum and, you know, put it, put that in my past, you know, I no longer felt the need for a crutch, like with drugs. It's just, it's just like, yeah. Yeah. And personally, if, if weed were to ever become legal here in Australia, you know what? I personally don't think I'd, you know, touch it again because, you know, to me, it, even if it were to become legal, I don't think it would be worth it. So, you know, the part of my life where I've, you know, where I use that, use that stuff is behind me. And, I, you know, I'm, I personally think that I'm better off without it. And, you know, I realize that it is a drug of addiction in two senses, you know, both the smoking it physically and, you know, it becomes addictive up here. You get addicted to the high and it's just like, you know, I don't need to, you know, relapse and go into that phase of my life again. So it's just like, yeah. But yeah, that's it for, well, this video. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, then hit, why don't hit that like button, share it around with your friends, subscribe to see more from me, ring that notification bell to be notified when I've uploaded new videos. And uh, feel free to drop a comment down below, tell me what you guys think as well. And social media, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and my often forgotten second channel, Stroms Vlogs. All links are in the description box below. And yeah, until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Bye.